Welcome to Wellspring on the Air. I'm Lindsay Steffen, a therapist at Wellspring. I'm the host of today's show about gratitude. So today I'm here with Beth Assis. She's going to be discussing this interesting topic with me. So Beth, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself? She's one of our Wellspring therapists, but let's get to know you a little bit. Great. Okay. So um, yeah, I, my name is Beth. I've been working at Wellspring for a little over five years now. And um, I have, um, I, I'm originally from North Carolina. That's a fun fact. And mm -hmm. I have lived in Miami for about 12 years. Um, and I have, I'm married and I have four kids. So my oldest is a 15 year old and my youngest is three. So we have all Phases. <laughs> yes. So you probably have to practice some gratitude sometimes yeah. on a, a crazy day or, <laughs> you know, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I, it's funny because as I was preparing for this um, today, I was thinking through, um, man, there's moments in my life where I'm better at it. And then there's moments in my life that I'm not so good at it. And it reminded me, I need to I think I'm at one of those moments where I haven't been so good and diligent about being grateful. And so this has been a good reminder for me to kind of get back into some of those practices. Yes. So it was good. It was good that, that you guys asked me to do this because it was a reminder for me. Yeah, sometimes it's true. We know things, we know the right things to do, but life gets busy and you just forget, oh, I'm not using this coping skill or I'm not, you know, practicing this anymore. So Good. Well, it, it blessed you and I hope it blesses our audience too. just to remind you about gratitude. We're going to talk about how it affects our, our mental health. Um, we're going to talk about what the Bible says about gratitude, what research says, and then we're going to wrap up at the end with some practical ways that you can practice gratitude. So definitely stick with us. It's going to be an interesting show. Um, let's go ahead and dive in then, Beth. So how does gratitude affect our mental health? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so first I wanted to start with a little story. When I was um, living in North Carolina, I worked with youth ministry at a church and I met a girl who was in middle school at the time and she had just recently um, started to do a gratitude journal and it was kind of a recommendation of her mom because she was feeling kind of sad and down and comparing herself to other teenagers, which is very typical of that age. And um, so she started doing this gratitude journal. And she said at first, it was really, really hard to think of like one thing to write. But her mom was like, just try to think of one thing every day that you can write. And so pretty soon after a few weeks, she was writing like one right after the other, filling up pages of things she was grateful for. And um, it just became like this habit in her life. And um, I think by the end of high school, she had like journals and journals and journals filled wow. with things that she was grateful for. And she was, su you could tell like in her life um, and in the way that she interacted with other people, um, she wasn't the type of girl that was like jealous or envious when other people had stuff that was better than her or, you know, dated the perfect guy or whatever. She wasn't envious of others. She was really grateful and she was really, um, she would encourage other people and um, just a, very, a light. I mean, she was just such a light. And that always stuck with me because um, I do believe it has to do with how she implemented the, the, the habit of gratitude in her life on a regular basis. Wow. So I always think of her when I think of this topic um, I know That's that awesome. one, at one point she gave, she gifted her mom with, she went back through the journal and she looked at all the times that she mentioned her mom in the journal and that she gave that to her mom as a gift. So she, she, you know, and That's I'm amazing. Sure, I would say probably to this day, she still does it. She's just such a, um, a bright, um, presence. And so I always think of her, but when we yeah. think about like mental health, um, I mean, she's a perfect example because she was kind of down and sad and feeling mm. kind of sorry for herself and her te early teenage years. And suddenly when she started to do that, she started to get happier. Um, and so when we practice gratitude, um, it, it reduces our negative emotions. It, it reduces things like regret and frustration and envy um, yeah. and, resent and resentment towards others. 
Um, I think of Brene Brown. I don't know if you're going to talk about her today, so I don't want to steal your content, but yeah, I think of how she talks about in a lot of her books about a deficit mentality, how mm -hmm. we always feel like we're living out of deficit and kind of the antidote for that is gratitude to keep noticing instead of dwelling on what we don't have, or if I did have this, I'd be happy noticing all the things we do have. And it starts to, you probably will go into this, but it changes our, our mental health state. It changes our brain and your default really, instead of having that negative self-talk like, Oh, you don't have enough. You don't have that. Like her, we start to notice, Oh, my default is, Oh, it's raining, but you know, but at least I have a car I can get to X, Y, and Z right now without getting wet. I don't have to walk or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, Brene um, Brown, I, I actually have a little quote from her. Uh, I'll go ahead and bring it in now. Um, she said, I did not come across someone in my research who referred to themselves as joyous, who did not actively practice gratitude. Wow. And so I think she kind of originally thought that people um, who are joyful are grateful, but really she realized people who are grateful become joyful. So I, I thought that I was love that. Cool. That's powerful though. So think if you're fighting, even de my clients with depression, I, I do, I tell them, Hey, let's start practicing gratitude, journaling, even three things a day at the end of your day. And they do the ones who actually diligently, you know, start utilizing that skill. They notice, yeah, I, I don't feel as down. That's not the cure all, but it's one piece in a combo of things to definitely yeah. help start lifting your mood because it's changing your whole perspective about your life and the world. Yes, for sure. For sure. And even, you know, um, a lot of the research has, has shown that um, people who are um have, have struggled with past trauma in their lives it's how it's helped a lot um practicing gratitude um i mean it's all good stuff i don't know why we don't all do it all the time <laughs> <laughs> there's no <laughs> negative consequence to practicing like, gratitude like, it only makes your life better this? why do we not do this all the time but um even with our relationships it it, it increases um we can have uh, more empathy with people better communication um, more likability, who doesn't want more likability among their group members, right. um, in work settings, um, more involvement as a team member. So it's all around, it's good for our mental health, it's good for our personal mental health, with our self-esteem, it's also with our interpersonal skills. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's some research, research out there that says it's such a natural antidepressant that it's almost as effective as a medication. So, wow. um, it's that's pretty a, cool to see. That's a big research, you know, kind of finding right there. I mean, imagine we definitely, you know, we're, we're not for or against medicine. Sometimes it's appropriate and we definitely respect that. But again, if let's say you're on medicine or not, if you do practice gratitude though, and just noticing this other natural boost that you can get and kind of, again, I'm a big believer in the combo. So it takes a lot of things to fight depression or anxiety, but this is yeah. an awesome tool in your tool belt for our listeners. Yeah. And yeah, oh good. Well, tell us a little bit about physical health, maybe the brain in particular, Beth. Yeah, for sure. So, um, um, also, they found that just gratitude actually increases um, people's well-being, you know, physical well-being. So fewer oh. aches and pains. Um, and the more um, people practice gratitude, the more they end up taking care. This is probably because of elevated self-esteem, but they take better care of their bodies um, by exercising. They are more likely to get the checkups they need from the doctor. It improves sleep. So if anyone out there is struggling with getting to sleep at night, maybe like a great idea would be to have a little journal next to your bed where you jot down a few things where things that you're grateful for before bed. It doesn't have to be like a long list. It can be two or three things. And um, maybe- I love that. Something. I want to try that, Beth. I'm going to <laughs> get back to our listeners. <laughs> yeah. I know all this is for me too. It's a good reminder of, of what I need to- to do. Um, it also helps with our immune system. So if you think of, um, you know, coronavirus right now, I'm all about strengthening my immune system in any way that I can, you know? Amen. And so, um, and I think that's probably all of us. So the more that we um, are on practice gratefulness and, you know, that can be, that's not just writing things down or saying things aloud. That might be writing someone a note, a meaningful note, mm. someone special in your life. Um, someone who's impacted you or just calling someone 
someone up and say, you know, how grateful you are. And even with strangers, like in the grocery store, being grateful, saying thank you, um, yeah. um, being able, being aware of the people around you so that you can um, shine a little light into their lives by being grateful. I think that's yeah. so important. I feel like it's actually, and you know, not to be dramatic, but it really is, it's life changing and world changing because you're, you're improving yourself personally. So you're happier, you're a, a kinder, better human. And so you're also spreading that though. And then it, even what you said earlier, you're more likable to people. So you're kind of, as you think, you know, you're rubbing off on them, maybe they catch your gratitude bug or whatever. And yeah, I think it's, it's just a very positive way to live. I think it makes you more optimistic because again, life is hard. We all have struggles. I'm sure our listeners right now are dealing with big issues in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so to notice that we kind of do default to the negative as humans, we look at what we don't have. So you're almost using it's a little bit of our CBT or cognitive behavior therapy to balance out. But what's true? The evidence is that, yeah, my car broke down and maybe, and the other side is that, and also I, I do have almost enough money to pay for it. So maybe I'll have to borrow a little or whatever the case, or, mm -hmm. uh, or I have a, a mechanic cousin who's going to give me a good deal. So noticing that, yeah, it's such a bummer that the car broke down, but I'm, I have some situations that are more favorable than it could be. So you're just balancing and kind of looking at life more glass half full, I guess you could say. Yeah, definitely. And I think with our brain, um, it's pretty cool that um, when we practice gratitude, our brain releases dopamine and serotonin, which wow. are two important neurotransmitters um, that are responsible for our emotions. And um, it's kind of an immediate mood booster, um, allowing us to be happy from the inside. And I couldn't find the actual, I, I found this years ago, but I'll have to go back and find exactly the source of this. But um, they did this research uh, project many years ago and probably like seven years ago. And they basically just asked people to write three things that they were grateful for every day. And they did a scan of their brain before and after. And the, bef the, the after scan showed um, a lot less cortisol in the brain, which is the stress hormone. Um, and I thought that was really interesting just three a day that's like nothing that's that's quick and easy you know yeah. we're not asking you to you know run every day three miles or take yeah. literally 10 seconds to write three things yeah and I think it was like 40 days or something like that um and to me that was wow you know it really does change our brain it changes the neurotransmitters it, it changes the pathways that we're forming in our brain. So if we tend to go to the negative each time, our brain is like, yep, I know that path. I'm going to the negative. But if we, mm -hmm. if we consciously, consciously say, no, I'm going to think positively about that. Like your example with the car, you know, we can change yeah. the ways, which is pretty cool. It's really powerful. I think, I hope this empowers our audience that you actually, you have more control over your emotions than you might feel sometimes. So, well, awesome, Beth. We're actually, we're going to take a short break. So I'm Lindsay Steffen with Wellspring on the Air, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Wellspring on the Air. I'm Lindsay Steffen. If, if you're just joining our show, our topic today is gratitude. So I'm here with one of our therapists, Beth Assis. We've been talking about gratitude, and so far we've talked about how gratitude affects our mental health in very positive ways. Uh, also, it affects our physical health, and particularly the brain. It actually changes our brain when we practice gratitude. So if you joined in late, you can find us on your favorite podcast channel on Wellspring on the Air, or you can go to our blog page at wellspringmiami.org and just search for this topic, gratitude. So we'll continue, Beth. Uh, I would love to hear a little more. I think you have some more research points. So I'd love to hear more what the research says, and then we'll go into what the Bible says. Yeah, for sure. So there, a lot of research has been done in this area of gratitude. Um, one that I found to be really interesting, um, we just talked about the brain and, and cortisol and, and how quickly the brain can change. Um, but this one was done by um, Dr. Emmons from the University of California and Dr. McAuliffe, actually from the University of Miami. Um, and basically, they had their participants write down a few sentences each week 
which is focused on particular topics. So one group wrote about things that they were grateful for during the week. Another group wrote about just their daily irritations or things that had displeased them during the week. And the third group wrote about things that were, um, that had affected them, but there was no emphasis on being positive or negative. It was just write down things that have affected you this week. And so after 10 weeks, the first group, um, as you can probably imagine, <laughs> um, <laughs> they felt a lot more optimistic about life. They felt a lot more, they just felt better in general about their lives. Um, they had, um, you know, they were less irritated and, um, and even their relationships improved with other people. So, wow, um, again, that's amazing. Honestly, the, the research supports what we kind of, you, you know, maybe your gut tells you, yeah, gratitude's a good thing, but it's actually, it's a powerful tool from what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, another one that I found that was really cool. This is from, um, University of Pennsylvania. Basically, um, the university divided people into groups to make some calls to get some of the alumni to make donations to the school. So one group was given kind of like a pep talk right before. Um, and the, the director said, you know, I'm just so grateful for you guys. I'm so thankful for all your hard work. And, you know, just gave, just kind of poured into them and expressed gratitude. And the other group did not did not get that pep talk. Um, and at the end, the ones who had heard the pep talk um, actually made 50% more in the fundraising efforts than the ones that had not. Wow. So I thought that was pretty amazing. That's a lot. That's like a big difference. And that was yeah. just a little pep talk before they went and did their thing. So Wow. The power of words is what this is, you know, and the power of even our little actions. I love this because as a counselor, I think people come and feel very out of control of their lives and their emotional states. And very quickly, though, we want to empower you as you come to Wellspring to know, no, there's, there's a lot you're out of control of, but there's many things you're also in control of. This is a beautiful example. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the final one that I found that I thought was really cool was a study that was done in China on death anxiety. So anxiety related to death, the topic of death. And so they had three groups. One group wrote gratitude notes. Um, one uh, wrote uh, about their worries, just wrote down things they were worried about. And then the third group was given like a neutral task to, okay. to, to do. Um, they didn't really explain exactly what that was, but just something neutral that was either positive or negative. Um, and so the ones that wrote gratitude notes or wrote things that they were grateful for showed fewer symptoms of death anxiety than the other two. So they were basically exposed to talks and feelings about death, you know, let's talk about death. And that first group was less afraid. And um, so I thought that was really cool too. And it just reminds me of how, you know, anxiety is so, is um, on the rise right now. Yeah. We have so many things going on in our world and our nation um, that is provoking a lot of anxiety in people. And so um, anything that we can do to lessen that anxiety, I think is key. And you said this before, but I think we have to kind of come from lots of different angles and just in yeah. any way that we can, we, um, because it affects us, it affects our families. It affects our um, our friends and our the people that we work with. So it's really yeah. important for each of us individually to do some work in this area. I love it. Yeah, as you're talking, it, it makes me think of hope and really how gratitude can inspire hope. Hope, like a more optimistic view of life. Even some things are hard, some things are difficult, but also some things are good. There's still things to be grateful for. So yeah, that's an anti-anxiety, an antidepressant, uh, like pro so many positive feelings. So, wow. I, who knew gratitude could be so powerful? Even me as a counselor, knowing a lot of the research as I'm hearing you today and being reminded and learning, it really is. It's super, super powerful. So, all right. Well, anything else on research or should we dive into what the Bible says? Yeah, let's dive into that. Let's dive into the Bible. I think um, what's always cool to me is that, um, for those of us who believe the Bible to be true and to be God's word, we've known this all along. We've known this is what <laughs> the word of God has told us for thousands of years. And um, 
now lately, you know, recently now that they're able to do brain scans and things like that, it's like, oh yeah, this is, this is true, you know, yeah. and science it confirms, is, right. yeah, it confirms what the Bible has said all along. So I, I love that when that happens because, um, yeah, it just reminds me of, of how true the word of God is. So first Thessalonians, um, five, 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of Christ Jesus for you. Psalm 118, 24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ephesians 1, 16 says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Colossians 3, 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called one body and be thankful and then uh, Ephesians 5, 20, giving thanks always and in everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I like that with many of them, it's like on a regular basis, you know, like giving thanks on a regular basis. It's not yeah. like once in a while, give thanks Thank at Thanksgiving, <laughs> give thanks. Right, <laughs> right, what you're grateful for. Yeah, it says give yeah. thanks always, always. Yeah. That's a always continuously, continuously that I think the third verse I read about, I don't give, I do not cease to give thanks um, for you. That's Paul writing to the Ephesians and he's, he's being great. You know, he is um, on a constant basis um, giving thanks to his friends in Ephesus, yeah. you know? And so I think that's, that's cool. So it's, a, it's a, a reminder for us to be constant in our, in our gratefulness. Yeah. And kind of cool just because some of our listeners may or may not believe the Bible. So for you ascribe to the research that we shared, but for those of us who are believers, just to see that God, again, he's the great psychologist he made our mind and our brain and so he knows what works for it and so he's he's giving us basically i call it holy spirit cbt like holy spirit cognitive behavior therapy where he says hey like practice gratitude daily and he's not saying it as a command or a drudgery but actually because it works for our brain our brain thrives on that our brain is happy and more positive so god is just he's pointing us to the tool so that we can live in a a more fulfilling way and really thrive in this world. Yeah, so true. So true. Yeah. And I think that um, God knows what's best for us, you know, and, uh, and it also helps us to turn our eyes um, away from ourselves, because I think sometimes when we get into that negative place where we're only thinking about how things are going wrong, and this is going wrong, and that's going wrong. Um, but if we can see, you know, little glimpses of hope, and we can be grateful for those things, um, it also helps us to put our, take our eyes off of ourselves and not be stuck. And so that we can, um, be helpful to other people and help other people, you know, be kind and, yeah. and love others. So I think that's really important. It's making me think, you know, if you have maybe a difficult relationship in your life, but it's someone maybe focusing on what you're grateful for, for them, actually, just like if we do that in the world, it changes our perspective on our life in the world. And, maybe your perspective towards that person starts to change. Like how they say, if you pray for someone, you almost can't help but start to have a little supernatural love for them. Even if at baseline, you find them very irritating or whatever. Yes, that is so true. That is so true. That's, that's good. That's yeah. good advice. Um, yeah, so we can, we, there's um, some practical ways we can practice gratitude, um, which I think, you know, I go back to, it's anything that you do, you just kind of, there's that little push at the beginning to get something started. Um, so it does take some, some discipline and some, some habit building. Um, just like if you were to start a new exercise program or a nutrition program, it takes discipline. Um, yeah. I don't think it comes naturally to us. Um, so we have to, we have to kind of push ourselves to do it. So especially, I, I keep saying this over and again, but like, especially, um, these days, <laughs> I think it's just been even harder because we're surrounded by a lot of negativity and negativity breeds negativity. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of anxiety in the world. So this is something to help combat it. Even with your kids, if we have, you know, moms and dads listening or teachers, camp counselors, whoever, youth workers, you know, teaching mm -hmm. our kids to practice gratitude and at home, not always 
listening to the news and hearing all the things going on, but maybe be like, Hey, even around the dinner table. So anything good happened today? What are you grateful for from today? Yeah, definitely. So dinner table conversation, that's a great one. Um, writing a thank you note to someone, um, even thanking someone mentally, like thinking who's somebody that I want to kind of thank mentally today. Um, keeping a gratitude journal, which is what we mentioned before. Um, praying, um, thanking God for his blessings, um, meditating and focusing on what you're thankful for, appreciating yourself, standing in front of the mirror and saying nice things about yourself, compliment yourself. Um, I say this to clients all the time. You know, I think we, it's really hard for us to love others if we don't love ourselves. And so we kind of have to start there and we can give God the glory for the gifts that he's given us. Like we don't have to take it all like, Oh, I'm so great. I'm so smart or I'm so beautiful or whatever it is. I don't, we don't have to, um, say it in a cocky way, we can say it and give glory to God for those things, you know, um, write down the names of people you're grateful for today. Um, write down what you're learning from current challenges. I think that's a good one because we are facing collectively so many challenges and, but writing down what's God teaching you, what are you learning through this time? Yeah. Um, That's rejoicing and suffering. (laughs) We're not enjoying it, but I'm trying to see, yeah, what is the, maybe the good or the meaning coming out of this suffering? For sure. For sure. Yeah. I have a practical way. I'll just share that I use is there's a app called calm and they have some, you know, meditations and mindfulness check-ins, but every day at 6 PM calm sends me a little prompt that says, what are you grateful for today? Um, or what are you looking forward to? It's just different gratitude prompts. And so we're, we're tied to our phones. That's a reality. So if you can't imagine writing pen and paper, which I think is a beautiful practice, but you can just type in the three things you're grateful for, even on the go. Um, but I noticed that helps me because I might at the end of the day at 6 PM, I probably am tired and stressed. And so it makes me reflect and find the good moments in the day and kind mm-hmm. of move back there. So yeah, right. that's, great. that's good. I like well, that. It's about time to close Beth. So any last things you want to throw in before we start to close? Yeah. So I just wanted to encourage, um, everyone listening today to, um, maybe think of some friends of yours or family members that you could take on this new habit of practicing gratitude together. So maybe you can kind of come up with a goal and have a group of friends do it with you, or maybe you do it as a family, um, if you have kids, or maybe if you're a grandparent, you do it with your grandkids. You know, it doesn't matter, the sky's the limit. Maybe you're a teacher, do it with your classroom of students, but come up with a goal together and then try to meet the goal. You know, maybe it's two or three things a day that you're thankful for and you write them out together. Um, or you say them aloud at the dinner table, or you say them aloud in the classroom. Um, I think that would be, I think that's the best way to start implementing a new habit is by um, getting people to do it with you. And you have that accountability accountability there as well. Yeah. And you're modeling it and helping them kind of get that going. So awesome. Well, thank you, Beth. I'm so glad you joined us today. And We hope our listeners all have learned a little bit more about gratitude and why it's good to practice it and then just practical ways how to practice it. So if you missed any part of the show, go to our podcast at Wellspring on the Air or go on our blog at wellspringmiami.org. You can look up today's show on gratitude. And if you want to send any questions or comments, you can reach out to on the air at wellspringmiami.org. So I'm Lindsay Steffen with Wellspring on the Air because hearts and minds matter.